today we are going to be talking about antiarrhythmic medications. First, let's talk about arrhythmias. Arrhythmias are conditions involving irregular or abnormal heartbeats. So an abnormal heartbeat can be one that beats too fast, also known as tachycardia, or one that beats too slow, also known as bradycardia. Abnormal heartbeats can further be classified as a specific condition depending on the cause and type of abnormal heartbeat. Often, arrhythmias are caused by problems with the conduction of electrical impulses within the heart. In this case, antiarrhythmics can be taken to treat the condition and return the heart's rhythm back to normal. Here, we have an example of an arrhythmia, specifically an atrial flutter, which is shown on the left. On the right, we see a normal sinus rhythm. Can you spot the difference? Antiarrhythmics are a type of medication that can be used to treat arrhythmias. The type of medication that a patient can use will depend on their condition. Patients will often try multiple different medications to find the one that works best for them. Antiarrhythmic medications can be divided into different classes depending on their mechanisms of action. These mechanisms include class 1 medications, which are known as sodium channel blockers, class 2 medications, or beta blockers, and class 3 medications, or potassium channel blockers. Sodium channel blockers slow the conduction of electrical impulses in the muscle of the heart. Slower conduction means that heart muscles contract less frequently, thereby slowing down heart rate. They do this by blocking sodium channels in the heart, thereby slowing the conduction of electrical impulses and heart rate. So some frequently encountered examples of medications within this class include disopyramid, quinidine, mexilatine, flecainide, and propefinon. Remember that almost all medications have two names. The ones on the left are generic names, while the ones in the brackets are their trade or their brand names, which you may be more familiar with. Again, both names refer to the same medication, which means they have identical active ingredients. Keep an eye out for a future video explaining the difference between generic versus trade names. So beta blockers work by blocking the action of the hormone adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, from the receptors on the heart. So this mechanism causes the heart to beat at a slower pace, thereby lowering blood pressure. These medications are especially useful for controlling heart rate in patients with paroxysmal persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter, as well as ventricular tachycardia and more. So some examples of beta blockers include bisoprolol, metoprolol, etanolol, and esmolol. Notice how all the generic names of beta blockers end in alol? Most medications within the same class tend to have the same suffix, so this is a useful trick that can help you recognize a beta blocker if you are ever prescribed one. Potassium channel blockers will slow down the conduction of electrical impulses in all heart cells. They accomplish this by blocking the repolarization of the heart cells, which ultimately leads to a prolonged contraction phase and more time in between heartbeats. Heart rate will then decrease as a result. So, some examples of potassium channel blockers include amiodarone, dronadarone, and solitol. So similar to beta blockers, calcium channel blockers will also slow the conduction of electrical impulses at the SA and the AV nodes, which will in turn decrease the heart rate. They do this by blocking the movement of calcium into the heart cells, which slows down the rate of contraction of the heart muscle. This will prolong the time between each heart contraction, which reduces heart rate. Some examples of calcium channel blockers include diltiazem and verapamil. So antiarrhythmics can be administered either orally or intravenously. The method of administration depends on the patient's condition at the time. In more severe conditions, they are administered intravenously for quicker action. Some medications, such as quinidine, are available in both oral and intravenous forms. Other medications can only be found in only oral or only intravenous forms. It is important to note that continuous cardiac monitoring 
is required when antiarrhythmic drugs are administered intravenously. Although administration ultimately depends on the specific condition and medication, oral administration of antiarrhythmic medications via pills, tablets, and capsules is often most encountered in chronic care. So, the issue with antiarrhythmics is that they have the potential to lead to the development of different arrhythmias or worsen existing ones. This is referred to as a proarrhythmia. This is why it's important for you, as a patient, to keep track of your vitals at home. If you don't have a blood pressure machine, you might want to consider purchasing one. By consistently monitoring your blood pressure and heart rate, you'll be able to identify trends in your health over time. The best practice is to take your blood pressure and pulse, which is your heart rate, three times a week with free readings each time. This information will help both you and your doctor understand how you are responding to your medications. They will then be able to adjust the dosage accordingly. So some other less common side effects may include dizziness, blurry vision, seizures, urine retention, gastrointestinal issues and discomfort, and sun sensitivity. Again, you know yourself best. It is therefore important to identify any symptoms you may be experiencing and to report them to your doctor. Don't be afraid to keep in contact with your doctor so that the two of you can work together to assess whether your medications are working as intended. Also, discuss with your doctor to make sure that no other medication you are taking interferes with the proper functioning of your antiarrhythmic medications. Lastly, here are a few tips when it comes to managing your medication. Always voice your concerns to your doctor and your pharmacist. They're here to help you. Carry a list of current and past medications with you to your appointments, and this includes your vitamins and supplements. Be aware of side effects and adverse effects. Ask your pharmacist or doctor beforehand about any potential side effects to the medications that you are taking. 